I mean, there's these ancient legends because you mentioned the, the, the natural power and the, the kind of spiritual aspect. There's these ancient legends about um, um, gods uh, living inside the volcano. What's your personal take on that? Is there really a magic kind of thing happening inside it now? Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you what's going on in there. Go on, please. <laughs> There he is. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> this is the title of a, oh no, I didn't want to show that one. I wanted to show the title just a second. These are the little tricky things during. There he is. He is the god of fire. This is Hephaestus. He, he was named, he was uh, uh, named by the Greek Hephaestus, Hephaestus, which is the current word in Greek for volcano. Okay. Whereas the Romans, they adopted, the ancient Romans, they adopted simply the god from the Greek and changed his name into Vulcan or Vulcanus, which obviously is the origin of the word volcano. And he was said to have his forge within Etna. Sometimes he also moved to the island of Vulcano or even Stromboli, but Etna was the main seat. And there he was, he was hammering on the hot iron to produce lightning bolts for the big boss of the gods, Zeus, <laughs> Zeus <yes. laughs> Jupiter, and each time the hammer came down on the iron, you made a loud bang, and we still hear these bangs every now and then. People get pretty upset about them uh, because they're very loud and sometimes they can also come at very low, very low frequencies, uh, very uh, low sound frequencies so that we can't hear them, but we feel them. It's called infrasound. It makes everything vibrate and it makes people extremely nervous. It's a very strong psychological phenomenon. And this <laughs> is one of the many, many legends which exist about Etna. There is the legend of the Cyclops. This is wonderful. I, I, had, I had no idea that uh, actually there's an almost direct link between uh, the, the, the legend of uh, Smith or, well, Volcano banging. And uh, there's these bangs actually going on. So the legend tells you something about the natural phenomena as it's observed. Oh, fantastic. Um, it is, it is something, that, yeah. something that I used in, indeed a lot when I made uh, public conferences online this year with schools and people to tell them, look, it, don't get worried about these bangs and about these infrasound, which shakes everything. It's, it's just a god of fire, a king being back to work. He's been there since the old Greek and before. <laughs> and it's, 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 nothing, it's nothing dangerous. It just can uh, just disturb your sleep, obviously, during the night. That's great. No, then I'm not so worried. I think I need to be more worried about being hit by a lightning bolt if I anger Zeus, but uh, that's a different story altogether. So. That's actually one of the main dangers when you go on Etna because it's a, it's a big mountain. And when you're in a, on a mountain in the thunderstorm, you become a lightning rod. But so is, even this... that is part of the... Oh, I see. The legend is quite good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot of true parts to it. It's like an ancient kind of ha hazard uh, catalog. And um, oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, on Etna, you meet a lot of ancient and new legends and, and spiritual things. And you, you can talk eternally about how Etna is being viewed by the people here as a sort of a super mama. Uh, so uh, lots of really, really amazing things. And also make, to make people rationalize when they personify uh, 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 an object, which is very alive, like an, an active volcano, then it becomes more understandable. And less frightening you maybe you respect it more but uh, you, you you when you understand then the fear uh, diminishes so that's what we are working on we try to to, to make people lose the fear and uh, uh, teach respect and understanding because uh, what we fear is what we do not know that's right and uh, yes i think once we personify or anthropogize i guess is the word um uh, these natural forces we feel we have a more direct link to it. We can understand it better. We might yeah. even be able to plead to it, uh, take up communication. And I think it helps a lot. I was involved in some efforts in Indonesia where local legends were used and taught to school kids. And indeed, um, uh, it seems that the uh, hazard awareness and uh, the behavior in a crisis was improving dramatically because of these different aspects that were brought in. It's very hard for, for some people to fully grasp what the seismometer tells you, but uh, when you have this uh, kind of legend people grew up with and you link it to the phenomena you see, you might be able to 
emotionally um, understand the situation a little better and uh, make a good decision in that case. So I'm delighted to hear that this is uh, what's what's happening there. Wonderful. And I'm also glad that you closed off with this uh, more cultural and spiritual aspect, because I personally think that besides the agricultural advantages and the tourist industry, there's something quite magic about volcanoes. I certainly think I feel it when I'm there.